Hello and welcome back to another video on my channel. Um, today I will be doing a bit of a special. Uh, I'm not sure how long this video will be, uh, but I reckon it will be quite long. Uh, so uh, I basically plan on uh, covering all of the Roman emperors uh, up to the fall of the West in uh, 476 uh, AD. Um, so you will have seen this uh, chart uh, in some of my update videos uh, if you have followed my channel for some time. Um, but I thought since I've not made a video in about uh, three or so weeks, uh, now would be a good time to cover this very large uh, chart. Uh, so without further ado, I will uh, try my best to cover this. Okay. So, uh, the first person... Um, who I would like to cover here, will be uh, Julius Caesar. Now, he was not the first emperor, uh, but came rather close to being the first emperor. Um, however, before we talk about him, we have to talk about the climate um, around the time when he was a young man. Uh, because his family, the Julii, uh, were actually very uh, important. They were patricians. And he had many familial ties to Cinna and Marius, who were very powerful. However, uh, one of Marius's rivals, Sulla, uh, entered in a big civil war with those two. Uh, and Sulla eventually won, and he began the descriptions, which uh, essentially gave him the power uh, to kill um, loads of senators uh, by basically saying that these people were enemies of Rome, and the the, uh, the the people of Rome could kill them and take their property. Uh, and this gave him a lot of money, but also made him quite unpopular. Um, so because Julius Caesar was the uh, nephew of Marius and the son-in-law of Cinna, uh, he sort of had to uh, flee uh, from Rome, uh, and he actually went to Anatolia, uh, where he was hosted by the king of Bithynia. Um, so he he stayed there for a while and actually received the grass crown, which was a very high Roman military honour um, while he was there. Um, and around this time, uh, Sulla retired from being dictator. Uh, you were only allowed to be dictator for about six months uh, and he died soon afterwards. Uh, and this meant that Julius Caesar could go back to Rome, which he did. Uh, so Caesar then with uh, a very wealthy uh, lieutenant of the now deceased uh, Sulla called Crassus, um, put down a very large revolt in the south of Italy led by Spartacus. Uh, Caesar was uh, a small military commander at this time. Um, and uh, Crassus and Pompey, who is also relevant, uh, basically started bickering uh, because Pompey had stolen a lot of Crassus's glory uh, for this campaign. However, Caesar saw that uh, there was uh, sort of a good relationship to be uh, had here between these three men. Uh, so he formed a, an informal partnership between them uh, called the First Triumvirate. Okay? And the uh, sort of objective was to give each other power. So in the first year of the Triumvirate, Pompey and Crassus uh, basically made themselves uh, consuls. Uh, of course, Crassus was very wealthy. Um, if you know anything about him, he uh, had this scheme going in Rome where he would uh, essentially be the only firefighter in Rome. And if your house caught on fire, he would help you. Uh, but then he would be your um, sort of overlord, if that makes sense. Um, so he would basically have loads of property. Um, so Julius Caesar um, was then elected consul the year after in uh, 59 uh, and the consulship obviously uh, you, you would have two consuls his co-consul was a man called Bibulus um, but Bibulus was um, sort of a conservative whereas Caesar was a reformist and Caesar was able to manipulate the people into ignoring and shunning Bibulus uh, and obviously this basically gave Caesar sole command of the Roman uh, Republic for a year. Um, and in fact, 
the last day of uh, their joint consulship, uh, Caesar and Bibulus were supposed to make a speech, and Caesar delivered one. Uh, and then when Bibulus rose to speak, uh, and this was the first time he'd been seen out and about in about a year, um, he was basically vetoed by one of Caesar's supporters. Um, so that's an interesting thing there. Um, as part of Caesar's consolidation of power, uh, he secured for himself some important North Italian uh, provinces, and he went on a, a seven to eight year long campaign in Gaul, uh, subduing the tribes uh, and essentially being uh, victorious. Um, he was able to incorporate all of Gaul into um, a Roman province after defeating uh, Wersengetorix, who was the uh, Gallic commander. And um, he also went to Britain for the first time. He didn't really do much there. Uh, he couldn't. But um, that's a fun fact for you there. Anyway, um, while Caesar was having all these great triumphs in Gaul, uh, Pompey and the Senate were having some trouble. So firstly, uh, Crassus had died in a disastrous campaign in Parthia at the Battle of uh, Carai. Uh, and Julius Caesar's only daughter, called Julia, here, uh, who was married to Pompey, died in childbirth. Uh, and this severed Pompey and Caesar's last tie together. Um, and a powerful senator, called Cato the Younger, was able to manipulate uh, Pompey into becoming Caesar's rival uh, and Pompey who at first was sort of a centrist if not a reformer then became a staunch uh, conservative. This meant that if Caesar went back into Italy and denounced his governorship he would most likely be arrested and you know he would have gotten into a lot of trouble. Uh, so he was sort of forced to uh, start a civil war by marching his uh, loyal legions down into Italy um, and Pompey and the Senate then fled to Greece. Uh, Caesar pursued them and after uh, quite a long war uh, Caesar managed to defeat Pompey uh, at the Battle uh, of uh, Pharsalus I believe. Or was it Dyrrhachium? I forget. Um, Pompey fled to Egypt and was actually killed by the uh, the young King Ptolemy uh, but Caesar didn't know this and tried to pursue Ptolemy to Egypt. Uh, and before I go any further, I should also mention uh, sorry, Egyptian politics at the time. So um, the young King Ptolemy uh, had a father called Ptolemy the uh, Thirteenth, and in his will he left his kingdom to his uh, two children, Cleopatra and Ptolemy the soon to be Fourteenth. Uh, and Rome was named as the executor of his will. Uh, so this basically gave Caesar an excuse to be in Egypt uh, for quite a long um, time. However, the young King Ptolemy XIV had um, sort of stolen the kingdom from Cleopatra, um, and Cleopatra was in exile. Uh, and Caesar didn't really like Ptolemy after he found out what Ptolemy did to um, his former friend uh, Pompey, uh, whose head had been chopped off. Uh, so Caesar basically sided with Cleopatra, and uh, he also used the opportunity to get a lot of money. Um, they were held in a siege in the capital city of Alexandria for uh, the best part of a year, uh, while Marcus Antonius ran the city of Rome. Uh, but eventually they were able to break free, and... Um, they defeated Ptolemy the Fourteenth at the Battle of the Nile, and Ptolemy the Fourteenth was killed. Cleopatra and Caesar then um, had a child, Ptolemy the Fifteenth, also known as Caesarian, um, and uh, it's just worth noting uh, that he did in fact have a son. Caesar then went back to Rome because Marcus Antonius, oh sorry, wasn't doing a very good job, um, and he then uh, Caesar then. Uh, defeated the last remnants of Pompey's revolt in Africa, uh, led by Cato. After this, Caesar was essentially the undisputed master of Rome. Uh, he was showered in titles like Dictator in, uh, Perpetua, which means dictator for life, uh, and Patapadre, 
meaning father of the fatherland. However, uh, this was not to last for too much longer as many senators decided to kill him, uh, quite literally backstab him. Uh, and these were led by Cassius and Brutus. Brutus was the son of Caesar's favourite mistress, Servilia. Okay. Um, so after Caesar's death, um, the conspirators failed to realise how popular Caesar was with the people. Um, and Antonius was, uh, or Mark Antony, as he's more commonly known nowadays, uh, was able to consolidate power in the city um, without formally denouncing the conspirators. Um, it was at this time that Caesar's will was read, and it turned out that uh, Caesar's grandnephew, Octavius, who is very relevant, um, was named his uh, adopted son. And uh, this gave Octavius um, a great fortune, and also it gave him Caesar's name, which was, again, of great value. Um, Octavius was able to use this money uh, with the uh, Senate to march on Mark Antony. Uh, now, why was this? Well, essentially, the Senate, um, on the whole, secretly supported the conspirators. The Senate at this time was led by Cicero. And um, Mark Anton Marcus Antonius basically marched on the conspirators in northern Italy, um, but the Senate and Octavius beat him to it, and actually Octavius defeated Antony at Milan. However, um, Octavius was denied a consulship because he was too young, um, and this rather peeved uh, Octavius, so he teamed up with his former rival, Mark Antony, uh, and Lepidus, okay, in the second triumvirate. Okay, uh, the second triumvirate was far more formal, it split up the empire, uh, between them, or the Republic, should I say. Um, they also started a second round of prescriptions, um, and the chief culprit, or the chief victim, should I say, uh, was Cicero. Unfortunately, he was killed uh, and his fortune confiscated. Um, that was the um, immediate problem. After that, uh, Octavius and Antonius uh, marched on the conspirators at Philippi in Greece and were able to defeat them, and Brutus and Cassius uh, both killed themselves. Um, after this, um, Pompey's son, Sextus, uh, launched a revolt in the Mediterranean. He took over Sicily um, and Sardinia and Corsica. Uh, and after many negotiations, uh, including... Uh, Octavius actually marrying uh, one of Sextus Pompey's relatives uh, and having a daughter called Julia. Um, Octav uh, sorry, uh, Octavius, Lepidus and Antony basically defeated him, uh, mostly because of Lepidus. Um, and when Lepidus asked for the island of Sicily, uh, sort of as a reward, uh, Octavius and Marcus Antonius demoted him and kicked him out of the triumvirate. Okay, um, so after this, um, Octavius and Antonius basically did their own thing for a few years, um, but it was at this time that uh, Antonius launched a failed campaign into Parthia, and he also primarily uh, was in Egypt with his new lover, Cleopatra, uh, and it was said that he uh, blackened his eyes like a, an Egyptian prostitute which, of course, wasn't very good-looking for, um, you know, a Roman politician. Uh, this was further worsened, this uh, anti-Egyptian sentiment was worsened, uh, when it was uncovered that in Antonius's will, he had willed all of the eastern Roman provinces to his children with Cleopatra, uh, and he'd loaned the western uh, empire to Caesarea. This was a casus belli, or casus belli, should I say, uh, for Octavius, who defeated Antony at the Battle of Actium. Although it wasn't really uh, Octavius who defeated uh, Marcus Antonius. In fact, it was um, Agrippa, who was the son-in-law to Augustus, uh, but was also a very close friend um, and 
very important man. Okay, after this, um, a similar process happened to Octavius, uh, where he was showered in titles, um, and he was eventually given the title uh, Augustus, um, and he was also called the First Citizen. Uh, so he was never formally recognised as the Emperor, uh, but he was basically in charge and had uh, consular power in the provinces. Um, so Octavian, now known as Augustus, um, took the title of Pontifex Maximus from Lepidus after Lepidus died, um, and he also consolidated many borders. So he uh, finally defeated the Iberian hill tribes, uh, and went on a long campaign in uh, Illyria. Uh, in fact, like I say, Augustus never led any armies. Uh, in fact, this was led by Tiberius, uh, who was his son-in-law. Okay, um, Augustus's reign was long and prosperous. He died uh, in 14 AD, in fact, uh, after a 40-ish year long reign. Um, however, there was uh, an unfortunate event that happened um, in the Teutonberg Forest in uh, 9 AD, where a uh, Germanic uh, Roman, um, I suppose you would say, commander called Arminius betrayed the legions and led them into a slaughter. Um, and this sort of weakened uh, Augustus and he more or less went mad. Uh, for the last five uh, years of his reign, and was eventually poisoned by his wife, Livia. Um, Livia, in fact, was a cousin of um, Servilia. There we are. Um, you can see uh, her grandfather was uh, the brother of um, Livia, who was Servilia's mum. <laughs> okay. Tiberius then succeeded, and he was a long-reigning emperor who famously didn't do much. Um, he was quite melancholic, he was just a bit, you know, miserable, really. Um, he spent most of his time on the island of Capri, uh, indulging in many vices. Uh, meanwhile, his empire was ran by his Praetorian prefect called Sejanus, um, and Sejanus ran these things called the Treason Trials, uh, which were a bit like the prescriptions and allowed Tiberius to both murder his political rivals uh, while also taking their money. Okay, Tiberius eventually uh, died for the good of the empire, uh, and it's also worth noting that it was in his reign that a certain um, Galilean was crucified in Judea, uh, who will be relevant for later. Um, Tiberius was then succeeded by uh, Gaius, also known as Caligula, meaning Little Boots. Uh, Caligula is often known as the Mad Emperor, although in his first few years of reign he was actually pretty sound. Uh, in fact, he incorporated the client kingdoms of uh, Mauritania um, and uh, Numidia into his uh, empire. Um, however, he was, like I say, a bit crazy. He was made even crazier after an illness, um, and he essentially did loads of quite problematic things. Uh, so his family uh, history was actually quite tragic. Uh, a lot of his family were uh, killed uh, after the death of his father, uh, Germanicus. Um, so Gaius basically uh, wanted vengeance for that, and he... Um, found a lot of fault with the Senate, so he uh, commenced the treason trials. Uh, furthermore, um, he also declared war on Neptune, god of the sea, and famously took loads of uh, seashells as prisoners. He was um, quite um, swiftly seen off by uh, the Senate. Uh, he was murdered, in fact, by the Praetorian Guards, the first of many um, emperors to be murdered by the Praetorians. The Praetorians, and I mentioned them earlier with Sejanus, were um, guards to Augustus. They were the imperial guards. Uh, after Caligula, uh, his uncle Claudius uh, succeeded. I'm a big fan of Claudius. I really like him, um, but he is often seen as quite a mediocre, uh, mediocre, 
mediocre um, emperor. Uh, however, he greatly expanded the empire. He incorporated the vassal kingdom of Thrace, uh, and he also invaded Britannia with General Vespasian. Um, so he basically restored, uh, or sort of for the first time, um, consolidated the uh, empire's borders to what you would often see on a map. Uh, so it's interesting for that. Um, he was also quite notoriously a womanizer. He had about four wives, uh, one of which he had executed uh, because she was an adulteress. Um, Claudius uh, is quite an interesting emperor. He was also um, an avid writer, an avid scholar, uh, because he never really expected to become an emperor, obviously. Um, he also had a son, Britannicus. Um, however, at the end of his reign, uh, he was poisoned by his wife, uh, Agrippina, who was also uh, his niece. Uh, she allegedly fed him poisonous mushrooms. Agrippina then installed um, her son, Nero, um, as the emperor. And he was very popular uh, for the first few years of his reign, very charismatic. Uh, and he was under the tuition of Seneca. Uh, but then, when his mother threatened him um, to replace him with Britannicus, uh, Nero murdered Britannicus, and eventually murdered Agrippina, and his uh, wife, and his girlfriend. Uh, so he, a bit like Caligula, became mad uh, in his later years. Um, and of course, the most famous tale about Nero is him fiddling to uh, Rome burning. Um, he most likely didn't fiddle to it, um, but it was also convenient that the area of Rome that was destroyed uh, was the perfect size for a palace that he uh, built soon after. Um, so Nero was eventually uh, killed because uh, the governor of um, Hispania, a man called Galba, who was in his 70s, um, essentially revolted. Uh, and Galba was initially quite reluctant. He was actually proclaimed by um, a general in Gaul, uh, but he eventually accepted because you sort of have to in that predicament. And he marched on Rome um, and Nero um, either committed suicide or had one of his assistants kill him. Um, so Galba then became the emperor, and this is what is known as the year of the four emperors. Okay. Galba soon after was usurped by Otho, who was his lieutenant and governor of Lusitania, a governorship that he was given because his wife Sabina had been stolen by Nero. Uh, so Nero sort of compensated Otho by giving him Lusitania. Uh, Otho had had a, a prophecy or a vision of uh, becoming the emperor. That's why he did what he did, uh, by killing Galba. Uh, however, a Gallic general called Vitellius soon after um, declared himself the emperor. And after Otho was uh, defeated by Vitellius in battle, um, Otho basically killed himself. Um, and Vitellius became the emperor. He was emperor for about seven months. Um, he was very gluttonous, a pretty poor emperor. It was said that he uh, put the empire into crippling debt because of his gluttony. Um, now, it was at this time that uh, Judea revolted against the Romans, uh, and the chief general in charge of destroying them was Vespasian. Um, however, a, uh, a number of um, legions on the Danube uh, frontier basically declared Vespasian to be the emperor. Um, and they were led by um, a legionnaire called Primus. Okay, so Primus then defeated Vitellius uh, in battle, and uh, Vitellius was soon after killed in Rome, beheaded publicly. Uh, Vespasian was in Judea, so it took him some time to uh, get back. Uh, but when he was declared emperor, his son Titus finished off the siege of Jerusalem and killed a bunch of people. Um, quite famously, there's the Arch of Titus uh, displaying the Jewish menorah being sacked, uh, you know, and taken from the city. 
So Vespasian then uh, ended the First Imperial Crisis, uh, and he was a pretty sound emperor. He first initiated the urine tax, um, which was controversial, um, but again, he was pretty sound, and this is known as the Pax Romani uh, Romanica, sorry, uh, because not much happened, and to the average Roman citizen, uh, life was quite prosperous and peaceful, um, unless you were... Uh, on the frontiers, um, and in that case, you could expect to be, uh, you know, have your home sacked by vandals or or uh, other uh, Germanic tribes. Um, so Vespasian soon after died. Uh, he was a friend of Josephus and Pliny the Elder, uh, and in fact, soon after Titus ascended to the purple, uh, a mountain called Ves uh, Vesuvius in uh, Pompeii uh, erupted and of course um, the town was decimated um, and I don't mean decimated as in every tenth person died I mean it was completely wiped out uh, in fact one of its victims was Pliny the Elder who was the commander of the fleet in the Bay of Naples um, Titus however responded quite well to this uh, and he funded um, a lot of aid and relief. He died soon after and was succeeded by his uh, decade younger brother, Domitian. Uh, Domitian was a tyrant. He persecuted uh, Christians, much like Nero, um, and he was eventually murdered by the Senate. And he was succeeded by a friend of Vespasian called Nerva. Nerva was extremely old by this point. Um, in his 70s, in fact, um, and he was um, declared emperor. The Praetorians who had uh, killed Domitian then uh, were killed by uh, a sort of more loyal uh, group of Praetorians, um, but to, for those Praetorians to kill the old Praetorians, they needed to uh, kidnap Nerva, which they did, uh, although Nerva was unharmed, and uh, eventually he thanked the um, conspiring um, um, Praetorians, basically, for killing the old, scheming Praetorians, if that makes sense. It's quite confusing, uh, but essentially there was a coup d'etat. Nerva was very old, though, like I say, he only, or like I said, he only um, ruled for two years. Uh, his greatest accomplishment was naming his heir, uh, a man called Trajan, uh, he was from Hispania. He is often considered to be the best emperor, uh, Optimus Princeps, and he uh, oversaw the height of Roman influence uh, and territory. Uh, he launched a famously successful campaign into Parthia um, and was, uh, by all counts, a very good emperor. Um, he eventually died, however, um, in the peak of Roman influence, and was succeeded by Hadrian, who was his second cousin. Uh, now, Hadrian was a very good emperor. Uh, of course, he consolidated the borders, most famously at um, Hadrian's Wall in uh, the north of England. Uh, but he was also quite manic as an emperor, I think that's fair to say. Uh, he didn't like to sit around in a palace. Um, he sort of leapt around from province to province, uh, helping the governors out, etc. Uh, he also had a homosexual affair uh, with a, a man called Antoninus, I believe, uh, or Antonius, um, which is just an interesting note uh, for you there. Uh, again, he had a very prosperous reign, although he did give back uh, Arabia and... Um, the province of Mesopotamia back to the Persians because, frankly, they were hard to defend. Um, so he didn't lose them, it was more of a tactical retreat. Uh, and he was succeeded by Antoninus Pius, who is known as a good emperor because he did nothing and nothing happened. Uh, so he was uh, a very stable emperor for the best part of 20 to 30 years. He was then succeeded uh, by two emperors, Lucius Verus and Marcus Aurelius, who is known as the uh, philosopher emperor because he wrote uh, the Meditations, which is a famous book of his. Varus actually died of a 
uh, plague that was going around at the time uh, called the uh, Antonine Plague. Um, so that left the empire in the sole hands of Marcus Aurelius. Uh, and Aurelius was a good emperor. Um, I wouldn't say he was, you know, the creme de la creme, but he was certainly very stable. He uh, repulsed um, many um, sort of Danube invasions. Uh, and of course, he is famous uh, with his son for being in the uh, film Gladiator about the Roman Empire. Um, so Aurelius, Pius, Hadrian, Trajan and Nerva are collectively known as the five good emperors uh, because they sort of oversaw the uh, peak of Roman dominance. However, this all ended when Aurelius broke the custom of adopting uh, a competent um, successor by uh, making his son the emperor after him. Commodus was decadent, he was um, frivolous, and he was a bad emperor. Uh, he basically spent most of the imperial fortune um, on parties, on games, uh, and he let the um, frontiers be overrun by various invasions. Needless to say, Commodus was soon after murdered. Um, now, after Commodus, um, we get the year of the five emperors, okay? First was uh, Pertinax, who was appointed by the uh, the Senate. He was a competent military man. However, uh, the Praetorians felt like they were owed a bribe for killing Commodus and making him the emperor, uh, and Pertinax didn't have the money to give them, uh, so Pertinax was killed. Uh, then the uh, Praetorians thought that they could solve their problem of bribes by selling the um, emperorship, and they sold it to a, a very wealthy man called Didius Julianus. Uh, however, Julianus was very uh, unpopular, and he wasn't really known by the uh, the army, um, so he was uh, eventually killed. Um, after uh, Julianus, there were two usurpers. Um, so there was um, Clodius Albinus in um, Britannia, I believe. He was the governor of Britannia. Uh, and he also tried to usurp power, but eventually uh, sort of retreated and, and gave in to the emperor, Severus. I'll get on to him in a minute. Uh, the other emperor, excuse me for one minute, uh, I just need to see his name, I forgot. was uh, Piscinius uh, Nisia. Sorry, I forgot about that. Uh, Nisia tried to use that power as well. He was the governor of Syria. Uh, but Septimius Severus, who was the African-born uh, governor of uh, Pannonia, was closer to Rome. So Severus basically took the city and then marched uh, to Anatolia, where he was able to uh, capture um, Nisia and eventually had uh, Niger killed. Um, so Severus uh, then consolidated power. Uh, in 197, he uh, again defeated Albinus in the biggest, um, or the largest uh, imperial engagement in all of the Roman civil wars. Uh, I believe there were about 100,000 men on either side. Uh, so a very large conflict there. And uh, Albinus eventually killed himself. Um, so Severus then consolidated power. He uh, marched into Parthia and had a successful campaign. Uh, and he consolidated the borders there, established dominance over Armenia. Um, he then famously went north to uh, past, in fact, Hadrian's Wall, past the Antonine Wall, uh, and deep into the uh, the lands of the Scots um, and Gaels and was very successful. He established a lot of dominance. In fact, Agricola, um, who was um, alive quite a while ago, uh, was the general in charge of um, asserting dominance over that region. Uh, so that's a, an interesting note. Okay, uh, so uh, Severus was succeeded by his two sons. Geta and Caracalla. 
Caracalla is a big tyrant, or was a big tyrant, because he is long dead. Um, and the most famous thing that he did was kill his brother, uh, Geta. Um, and Caracalla then basically killed loads of senators and then decided to not be in Rome for the rest of his reign. Uh, he famously would only eat seafood if he was far away enough from the sea for seafood to be a commodity. Uh, he also went to Alexandria on an, uh, uh, an imperial visit and was greeted by a play. Um, but the play was mocking of him and it also implied that he had killed Geta, which he had, but Caracalla didn't like that. Um, in fact, they called him Getacus, meaning killer of Geta. Um, so Caracalla responded by setting Alexandria alight and killing everyone. Uh, so you can see why he was scorned. Um, he also, like his father, uh, was pretty heavy on the military side of things and didn't really invest into public works, uh, which is why it's ironic that he was killed by um, a lowly uh, soldier while he was uh, urinating, essentially, in uh, in Syria. Okay, uh, Caracalla was then usurped by the Praetorian prefect, Macrinus. Um, however, um, Caracalla's auntie, Julia Mysa, uh, then overthrew Macrinus and uh, Macrinus's co-emperor, Dia Dumenian. Uh, it's quite a, quite a mouthful there. Uh, Macrinus and his son were both killed. Mysa then installed her grandson, um, Antonius as the emperor, who is more famously known as Elagabalus, uh, because he was of Syrian uh, descent. In fact, through uh, Mysa, you can trace him back to Antonius and Cleopatra, uh, so that's interesting. Um, yeah, so he was Syrian and worshipped a Syrian uh, set of gods, uh, which was quite disrespectful to the Roman pantheon, um, and his favourite patron deity was Elagabal, um, hence his name. Um, he also introduced the uh, the god Deus Sol Invictus, which was uh, essentially a black um, crystal that he had venerated as um, as a god. Um, so Elagabalus is known as being um, a very bad emperor because of his decadence. Um, he was a bit of a pervert, I think you could rightfully say, um, and he, well, firstly he wanted a sex change, which was, uh, that's not really perverted, but, you know, it was quite a big deal back then, obviously. Uh, but he also um, indulged in many vices, which I won't mention, um, but if you wanted to do research, you will understand why I think he is perverted, uh, or was perverted, as, like Caracalla, he is long dead. Elagabalus uh, was then killed by the Praetorians with his mother, um, and his first cousin, Severus, um, Alexander Severus, was installed as emperor. Severus actually reigned for quite a few years, although it was really his mother uh, and grandmother who ruled uh, Julia, Mysa and Mamea. Uh, and Mamea was his name, uh, was her name rather. Uh, Severus was eventually killed um, in battle or he was assassinated, sources vary, uh, after a failed campaign into Parthia. This is when uh, Roman history gets quite obscure and confusing um, because this is known as the crisis of the third century. Uh, so it's worth noting that in this time period, uh, many things happened. Obviously, there was loads of po political uh, turmoil, which I'll get into. In fact, I've got some notes here. Uh, everything else has been um, sort of, you know, just been able to speak about. But here is a period of history that I need notes to refer to. Um, but there were many plagues going around. There was the Ant uh, Antoninine Plague, um, named after Antoninus Pius. And there was also the Cyprian Plague, uh, named after Bishop Cyprian uh, of Alexandria, who was killed, um, in fact, martyred uh, around this time, okay? So, 
uh, and also there were ag agricultural uh, events that um, you know led to turmoil. Okay. Alexander Severus was uh, usurped by uh, Maximus I Thrax, who was from Thrace and allegedly was seven foot tall. Uh, Thrax was, by all accounts, quite a, a good uh, military commander. However, uh, two um, people in North Africa, father and son, Gordian and Gordian II, uh, decided that they wanted to be emperors, or rather, the populace of Carthage decided they wanted him to be emperor. Uh, so they basically forced Gordian I and Gordian II to, um, you know, usurp. Um, Gordian the first was actually born in the time of uh, Antoninus Pius, uh, so he was in his eighties by this point, uh, and actually he married his great granddaughter, uh, which is quite disgusting. Um, so Gordian and Gordian the second were eventually defeated after a few days uh, by a Numidian uh, army uh, that was loyal to Thrax. Uh, it said that Gordian the first. Uh, basically killed himself after he found Gordian II's uh, dead body um, from the battlefield. Um, the Senate, however, didn't like Thrax, and they appointed two of their own uh, to the purple, um, Balbinus and Pupianus. That was his name. Um, so Pupianus and Balbinus tried to uh, stop Thrax, and they were successful in that, uh, Thrax was actually killed three years into his reign at Aquileia by his uh, men. However, Galba uh, Balbanus and P Pupianus uh, were quite unpopular, um, and they were particularly unpopular with each other, and they were bickering a lot, and it's said that they were squabbling in the palace, and the Praetorians were called in to settle the dispute and they didn't know who was starting the fight, so they killed both of the emperors. After this, um, the successor to Pulpianus and Balbinus was Gordian III, who was the grandson uh, of Gordian I and the nephew of Gordian II. Gordian III ruled for uh, a few prosperous years. I say prosperous. They were relatively peaceful, um, but Gordian was killed in a Sassanid war. Okay, uh, he was then usurped by uh, the Praetorians, and the Praetorian prefect appointed his brother, Philip, who was born in Arabia, uh, as the next emperor. Um, now, Philip was probably a Christian, uh, which is interesting, um, and he appointed his uh, son, Philip II, as co-emperor, which is also interesting. Um, he had the good fortune of being the emperor that presided over the 1,000-year anniversary of Rome um, in 248, which gave him an excuse to throw loads of games, uh, which obviously pleased the public. Uh, so he was quite popular in that regard, um, but this was um, th this basically used up a lot of money, money that should have really been put towards the Danube frontier. And what you found was loads of Danube tribes started invading, um, and, you know, in particular the Goths. Uh, so Philip uh, sent up his um, chief senator, Decius, uh, to defeat the Goths. Decius did this with ease, um, but then Decius decided he wanted to be the emperor, so he marched on Rome and uh, killed Philip and Philip II. Okay. Uh, Decius then appointed his son uh, Herennius as the co-emperor, and they um, uh, they basically persecuted loads of Christians. Um, Decius, while he was um, usurping power, basically allowed the Goths to retake um, a lot of Danube cities uh, and sack them. Uh, so Decius and his son um, Herennius marched up uh, to defeat the Goths, but were then ambushed and both killed. Um, and they have the honour of being the first two emperors to die in battle. Okay. Um, so Gallus was then um, made emperor. Trebonius Gallus, actually. Gallus was his nickname. Uh, he appointed 
Hostilian, who was the um, son of the deceased Decius uh, as co-emperor, although Hostilian died shortly after either of Pax or of murder. Gallus then appointed his son, uh, Volusianus, um, as his co-emperor, which was a trend. It basically meant that he was nominating a successor. Um, however, um, they uh, they went to war with the uh, the Persians, um, and they were defeated. Okay, and then Gallus was killed. Um, Aemilian then usurped uh, power um, after defeating the Gothic tribes, but was only emperor for a year uh, because Valerian uh, took power. Now Valerian was a sound emperor. He was quite good as a as a commander and as a governor. Um, and he essentially divided the empire between himself and his son, uh, the first to really do that. Valerian uh, took over the east and went to Parthia, and I'll get onto that in a minute. Uh, whereas Gallienus, his son, um, spent his long reign, uh, and I say long, long in the context of the crisis of the third century, um, basically defeating um, loads of tribes. He he had mixed success. He was defeated sometimes. He was victorious sometimes. Uh, but he did manage to get a strong cavalry going, uh, and they were able to respond quite quickly. Um, but they were being overrun, and it was really, really um, tumultuous in the West. Um, so a general called Posthumus basically usurped power, except he didn't want to be the emperor of Rome. He wanted to be his own emperor, uh, so he made the Gallic Empire. Uh, the Gallic Empire basically was in control of Hispania, um, Gaul and Britannia. Uh, so that's um, obviously going to be a big thorn in the side of Gallienus, although it did mean that he didn't really have to um, turn his attention to the Rhine frontier, which I suppose was um, positive. However, uh, Gallienus then um, heard that his father Valerian had been killed because what had happened was uh, Valerian was having a decently successful campaign in Parthia, but was undefeated, and instead of dying in battle or escaping, he was captured. And for several years, he was kept as a prisoner of the Shah uh, and tortured and made to do all of these atrocious things. He was even used as a footstool for the Emperor, uh, or sorry, for the Shah. Um, and one day, when Valerian asked to go home and see his family, um, you know, and uh, do something like that. Uh, the Shah basically took great offence to this and had Valerian flayed alive, killing him. Um, so that's the story of Valerian and Gallienus. Uh, Gallienus eventually died. Okay, uh, now Gallienus, just trying to have a look at the numbers here. Yeah, so he was succeeded by uh, Claudius II. Uh, and Claudius II only ruled for two years. Uh, but he was quite a successful emperor. He saw great victories on the uh, frontiers um, against the Goths, hence his nickname, Gothicus. Um, after he died of uh, uh, sort of a, an illness, uh, he was succeeded by his brother Quintilus, um, but Quintilus never established real power. And he was succeeded by Aurelian. Uh, before I go into Aurelian, uh, I will just mention that there is a theory that uh, Claudius and Quintilus were the descendants or even the direct sons of Gordian II, which would make the Gordianic dynasty um, five members strong, uh, but that is d disputed. Um, and Claudius and Gordian also married um, mother and uh, daughter um, Aurelia and Crispinia, and Aurelia was the granddaughter of Severus. So there are some interesting links there. So Aurelian was Claudius's um, sort of chief um, commander. In fact, he was a lot older than you might um, imagine. He was in his 60s, uh, or rather he died when he was 60. So he was about 55, 56 when he was made emperor. Uh, but he was able to exploit weakness in the um, Gallic Empire 
uh, and Hispania surrendered to him. Uh, in fact, no, I think Hispania uh, surrendered to Claudius um, before, but then Aurelian basically retook all of the Gallic Empire um, and asserted dominance over it. Uh, by this point, Posthumus had died. Um, so Aurelian then marched east because um, at the same time uh, a queen had usurped power. Uh, now, to, to really understand this, we have to go back a bit to the reign of Trebonius, uh, because a king in the east called Odenathus um, basically was quite good to Rome. He um, was able to repulse loads of Parthians uh, and Sassanids, I think the Sassanids had usurped power by that point, um, from invading. And um, Odenathus was actually killed by his wife, Zenobia, um, Odenathus, by the way, he was known as um, uh, Severus or Septimius Odenathus because his clan, his family, uh, had been formally recognised as patricians by Severus when Severus was in the East. Um, anyway, so Zenobia had basically taken the Roman East for herself. Uh, she had usurped power. She'd taken Anatolia, the Levant and Egypt, which was very bad news. Aurelian... Uh, then marched to her capital of Palmyra and took it and established dominance and then marched away. Uh, but then when Zenobia and the nobles started uh, usurping power again, uh, he was less merciful and marched on the city, sacked it, killed everyone and uh, took Zenobia for a triumph. For this he is known as Restitutor Orbis, Restorer of the World, uh, and he is often considered to be the best uh, Roman Emperor. Uh, and I would go as far as to say uh, he probably was. Uh, it, it's a hard contest, honestly, um, but he was a very good emperor. And while he didn't see the same success as Trajan or, or any of the other emperors like Augustus, um, it's one thing being a good emperor in a good time, but it's another thing being a good emperor in a pressing and hard time. Aurelian, however, was murdered and uh, the Senate elected uh, Tacitus to succeed. This isn't the famous Tacitus, although it is the descendant of the famous Tacitus uh, up here. However, Tacitus uh, was the last senatorial uh, emperor and he died soon after um, of the pox. He was then succeeded by his half-brother Florianus, who soon after died as well. They were then succeeded by Probus, who was another very good uh, emperor, and he reports loads of Germanic invasions uh, into the Danube and Rhine regions, and for this he is known as Germanicus Maximus, um, because he was very good. He was then uh, killed soon after, and uh, he was succeeded by his Praetorian prefect, Carus. Carus was a good emperor as well, um, but he marched into the uh, Sassanid-held uh, territory in Persia, uh, and his campaign was going quite well until he was hit by a bolt of lightning and killed. Um, so, as you can imagine, that was sort of a bad omen, and the, the Romans retreated, and um, a lot of bad stuff happened there. Carus was then succeeded by his uh, two sons, and Numerian was actually um, killed just a year later, uh, and Carinus marched back uh, to Rome. Now, at this time, um, two generals, uh, Aper, shown here, and uh, Diocles, uh, he was from um, sort of Dalmatia, um, also established dominance, and Diocletian eventually engaged Carinus in battle, and Carinus's um, legions defected to Diocletian and Carinus was killed. So Diocletian was sort of um, the, the first emperor out of this dark age of Roman history. Um, he was then in direct conflict with Aper and uh, he killed Aper. In fact there was a prophecy about how Diocletian had to kill a boar uh, in order to become the emperor and Aper in Latin is boar so uh, that's a fun fact. Uh, Diocletian is a very famous emperor, um, and he is most famous for his tetrarchy. 
where he divided the empire uh, between four monarchs, two Augusti and uh, two Caesars, okay? Uh, so uh, Diocletian and Maxentius were the two senior Augusti uh, in the east for Diocletian and in the west for Maxentius. Um, now Diocletian was very clearly the um, sort of more important and senior Augustus uh, as he made many reforms and the other tetrarchs uh, obliged and followed his uh, direct lead. Uh, so Diocletian uh, reformed the economy, which was sort of a mixed bag. Um, he allowed people to pay in whatever they had lying around, rather than just money. Um, he also defeated the Sarmatians, hence his nickname, Sarmatius, uh, Sarmaticus Maximus. Um, and he killed loads of Christians in the Diocletian persecutions. Uh, he also went to Alexandria in a revolt. Um, and wanted to go full Caracalla on everyone uh, and destroy uh, Alexandria uh, until uh, his horse's knees, um, you know, until the blood of the Alexandrians was up to his horse's knees, should I say. Um, but then his horse basically um, sat down and Diocletian saw the omen and realised that he shouldn't massacre everyone. And um, then the Alexandrians, who were very grateful, uh, erected a statue, not of Diocletian, but of Diocletian's horse. Uh, so that's a, an interesting little story. Now, after this, uh, Diocletian fell very sick and he nearly died. He recovered, but then he decided that uh, he really should um, resign and he convinced uh, Maxentius to do the same thing, although Maxentius was quite reluctant. Um, and Diocletian then retired and became a cabbage farmer, which is funny, um, but there was actually a reason for this. It's because of Cincinnatus, back in the early glory days of the Republic, uh, did the same thing after retiring his consulship. Uh, oh, sorry, his, um, his dictatorship. So then uh, the two... Caesars succeeded, uh, Galerius and Constantius Chlorus, who was a descendant of Aurelia and Crispina, who were in turn descendants of Severus. So that's interesting there. Um, and Constantius um, is famous for being the father of a notable figure, Constantine. Uh, however, uh, Constantine wasn't promoted at this point. Um, in fact, uh, Severus was made the uh, Western Caesar under Constantius, while uh, Dyer was made the Eastern Caesar. Um, but when Constantius died suddenly, uh, the legions in Britannia proclaimed Constantine to be the next Augustus. Uh, however, the other uh, tetrarchs didn't like that, uh, so Constantine settled with just being the Caesar. Uh, however, he eventually was able to exploit a uh, weakness in the system uh, because um, Maxentius, um, who was the Western um, Augustus, basically um, had um, his power usurped uh, and Constantine took advantage of this and uh, he actually uh, marched on Rome and defeated the uh, Augustus uh, at the Battle of the Milvian Bridge. Now, this is probably uh, a really, really important, uh, in fact, no, it is a really, really important uh, mark in, in Roman history because uh, allegedly Constantine received a vision uh, of the Kiro. I've got an image of that uh, further up the chart. Um, here. Yeah, so it's this uh, black symbol here. Uh, the key row uh, are the first two letters of Christ's name in Greek, these two letters. Um, and uh, basically there was a sign in hoc signa winkis, meaning by the sign, you shall conquer. Um, uh, so, um, Constantine basically ordered his men to paint this symbol on their shields, and they uh, defeated the usurper, and Constantine became the Western Augustus. Vicinius had a similar vision, um, 
and defeated his own usurper, uh, Gaia, or sorry, Dyer. Um, but then Licinius became a, a diehard pagan and became a rival of Constantine. Okay, uh, so it's at this point that uh, Constantine and Licinius went into direct conflict and shortly after uh, Constantine was proclaimed the entire um, sort of um, emperor of, of the uh, the Roman Empire. Uh, that wasn't very eloquent, but I hope you understand what I mean. Um, so, Constantine was known as the Great, and he, in the Edict of Milan in uh, 311, basically legalised uh, Christianity. Sorry, I meant 313. Um, of course, this is the uh, Pope. He was a uh, Pope at the time. Uh, Constantine himself wasn't a Christian at this point and would only convert on his deathbed, um, but he was very tolerant. Um, he also commenced the Council of Nicaea, um, which basically uh, sought to uh, disprove heresies. However, uh, it only succeeded in making more with this bishop here, Arius, uh, who started the Arian heresy. Um, so Constantine um, also moved his capital to the east to a city called Byzantium, or Constantinople, named in his honour. Um, so, yeah, Constantine's very important for um, basically later Roman history, and he sets a precedent for having eastern orientated Christian emperors. Um, so, yeah, he eventually uh, converted to Arianism, which was a heresy, uh, on his deathbed because um, a bishop called Eusebius, who was also a relative of Constantine's, uh, basically persuaded him. Uh, Constantine died and he split the empire between his three sons, uh, Constantius, um, uh, and Constantius ruled the east. He was probably the most powerful and he had many wars with the Parthians, which I won't go into, oh, sorry, the Sassanids, um, but just be aware that he was having many conflicts. Uh, and then between his other two sons, Constantine and Constans. Constantine uh, tried to take over Constans' lands, because Constans was the younger brother, but had the more important provinces. However, Constantine died, and all of the West was then given to Constans. I beg my pardon. Um, now, uh, Constans then um, was the sole uh, Western emperor, and he was pretty good. He... Um, defeated many Frankish and uh, trans-Danubian uh, and, um, you know, barbarian uh, invasions from the Danube and the Rhine. Uh, however, he was eventually killed uh, by a general called um, Magnus Maximus, meaning the best, the greatest, uh, which he wasn't. Um, and after this, Constantius uh, basically decided that he would invade uh, the West, and Constantius eventually unified the empire. Okay, Constantius uh, then, uh, in fact, at the start of his eastern reign, so in 337, uh, murdered loads of his um, uncles and cousins in what's known as the Massacre of the Princes. However, he spared a few, including Julian, and uh, it was Julian who, Constant, uh, who Constantius left both the West and then the entire empire to uh, after he died. Um, now, Julian is known as the apostate because he was a diehard pagan. In fact, Constantius was an Arian Christian, um, which is interesting to note. Julian was... It, he's famous for being the last pagan emperor, uh, but he was quite mediocre. Um... He was an okay uh, military commander, but of course he was defeated soundly uh, when he went on a Sassanid campaign in the east uh, and was killed in battle. He was then succeeded by Jovian, um, who took over the mantle of emperor and ceded loads of territory to the Sassanids. Jovian died a year later and was succeeded by the nearest uh, military commander called Valentinian. Valentinian then split the empire between himself and his brother Valens. Uh, Valentinian actually took the lesser provinces in the west and gave the more prosperous east to his younger brother. Uh, and this was so Valentinian could better defend the empire. Valentinian 
uh, went on many bloodthirsty campaigns against the uh, infidels across the Rhine uh, and was very uh, successful, which is why he's known as the Great. Uh, and it's said that he was so angry at some um, emissaries from a warring tribe uh, that after threatening them uh, very passionately, uh, he burst a blood vessel uh, in his brain and died. Uh, now, his brother Valens was also pretty good. I quite like Valens. I think he's interesting. Um, but then there was also the Battle of Adrianople, uh, where Valens essentially rushed in and got himself and his army killed. Uh, and it's one of the worst military defeats in Roman history. And uh, yeah, But Valens, in his actual reign, was pretty sound. Um, and he was able to get his nephews uh, into um, good imperial positions in the West, uh, Valentinian II and Gratian. In fact, if Valens had waited for uh, Gratian to uh, come and help him in Adrianople, uh, then who knows, Valentinian, uh, sorry, Valens may have been successful and victorious, uh, but I suppose Valens sort of wanted a name for himself and he wanted his own victory. Um, so after this, uh, Gratian and Valentinian were uh, both the emperors in the west, uh, and Theodosius was made the emperor in the east, basically because he was the most senior guy around with a big army. Uh, his father, Theodosius the Elder, uh, was actually um, a very good and important general in uh, the west, and he had essentially defeated loads of... Um, armies in Britannia who were rebelling and uh, Pictish. Okay, uh, so Theodosius was known as the Great. Um, he not only made uh, Christianity um, sort of favourable, uh, but he actually uh, condemned paganism and made Christianity the state religion. Um, so, of course, he was the Eastern Emperor, uh, but after Gratian and Valentinian, the second had both fallen, he took the entire empire, and he is the last emperor to do so. Um, now, Theodosius, I wouldn't call great. Um, he was he was a good emperor. He wasn't bad per se, but he's not as good as other emperors with that title, such as Valentinian, Constantine, uh, and other ones like Aurelian and uh, Trajan and... Um, Augustus. However, um, he was still pretty good, uh, although he was also condemned by St Ambrose, the Bishop of Milan, um, because Theodosius had murdered loads of Christians um, in Thessalonica. When Theodosius died, he split his empire for the last time. Now, I'm not going to cover the East um, today, although I plan on doing a similar video about the Byzantines. Um, so, the person who's relevant here is Honorius. Honorius was made emperor when he was about 10 or 11, um, and the primary general at the time was called Flavius Stilicho, uh, who was the Magister Militum. He was also uh, half barbarian, uh, as you can see. Stilicho, in my opinion, was one of the greatest Romans of all time. Um, he defeated loads of invasions and was very stable. Um, it was at this time that Alaric, who was actually present at Adrianople um, and king of the Visigoths, tried to um, basically take loads of Roman territory, but Stilicho was able to defeat him and Alaric went eastwards. However, um, Honorius grew suspicious of Stilicho and had him murdered, which was one of the worst things that he could have really done as he was still quite young. Um, however, um, this meant that um, Alaric, who was, you know, powerful uh, at the time, was able to uh, march past Honorius's capital um, in the west and take Rome. Um, and he didn't just take Rome, he sacked it. Um, and there's a famous story that when Honorius heard of uh, Rome falling, he thought that it was his chicken that was also called Rome. Um, Honorius is particularly bad because everything bad in his reign can be attributed solely to Honorius. Um, but everything good in his reign, like Stilicho defeating people, can't be attributed to him. 
Honorius was a big man-child and eventually died at the grand age of 38. Um, he was succeeded by Constantius III, who was uh, his uh, half-sister's um, husband. And um, Constantius eventually died and left his uh, territory to Valentinian III, who was installed by Theodosius II. Um, Valentinian was very similar to Honorius in the fact that he was made emperor when he was a young boy and was a big man child, and uh, also he, you know, did loads of bad things and he didn't do any good things. Um, the chief general at the time was Flavius Aetius, who again was the Magisto Militum. Um, and Aetius was able to defeat Attila, um, the Hun, who was a you know, a huge thorn in the Roman side, um, and that was a, a very good victory, but that was Aetius's victory, not Valentinian's. Um, so that meant that um, Valentinian was suspicious of Aetius, and uh, Aetius was murdered by Valentinian uh, himself. Valentinian literally, you know, murdered him with his own hands. And this was prompted by Petronius Maximus, who saw uh, Aetius as being a big threat. Uh, at the time, there was also Leo the Great, uh, who was a prominent pope. Um, so, after Aetius was killed, Petronius uh, then killed Valentinian and made himself the emperor. However, he was unpopular and was usurped by Avitus. Uh, now, it was at this time that the Vandals then sacked Rome. Uh, of course, Vandal in modern English is now known as somebody who willfully destroys property, and it's because of the Vandal sack of Rome um, in 455 uh, and 456. So Avitus and his son were both murdered, um, and the nearest general, who was half uh, Frankish, in fact, I think he was fully Frankish, uh, called Rissima, uh, then usurped power, but he couldn't really be. Uh, the emperor because he was not a Roman. So he made his friend Majorian the emperor in sort of as a puppet. Majorian, however, was a really good emperor. Um, I think he's sort of the last great um, Western emperor because he defeated the Swabi and the Visigoths who were getting a bit too comfortable um, in Hispania. And he also uh, tried to defeat the Vandals and he was going to launch this huge invasion uh, into Vandalic uh, Africa. Uh, the Vandals had got to Africa through Hispania, and a fun fact about the Vandals in Hispania, a region of Hispania was named after them, Al Vandalus, or Al Andalus, which in modern terms is Andalusia, uh, so that's interesting. Majorian, uh, however, had his fleet destroyed, which was a big blow on the economy, and he was called back to Rome, he didn't suspect anything, and then Rick Rickimer uh, basically locked him up, had him tortured for a while, and then killed him. Uh, and he also killed loads of prominent generals, uh, and Romans, including Leo the Great. Um, so then um, Majorian was succeeded by uh, Severus and Glycerius, uh, and then Olibrius, uh, sorry, Olibrius and then Glycerius, uh, who were all puppets of Rissima. Um, okay, so uh, after that, um, a general called uh, uh, Anthemius um, also took power. Sorry, I forgot about Anthemius. Um, so after this, uh, Julius Nepos uh, deposed Glycerius and made Glycerius an archbishop um, in Dalmatia and Split, which in fact was where Diocletian had his palace. Of course, Diocletian was uh, quite bad to, towards Christianity, but after Diocletian's death, uh, his cathedral, uh, or sorry, his home was turned into a cathedral, which is quite ironic. Uh, so Nepos then um, was emperor for a year, uh, but was then exiled uh, by this general here, Orastes, who was then killed in battle by Flavius Odoacer. Uh, Orastes put his son on the throne before he died, called Romulus Augustulus, which is really quite a sick uh, pun that history plays on us. 
uh, because of course Romulus and Augustus were both sort of uh, founders of Rome in their own regards. Um, Romulus founded Rome itself and Augustus founded the empire. Um, Romulus Augustus was then deposed and the uh, western regalia was sent to the eastern emperor Zeno. Uh, so some notes, Nepos um, and some uh, other Roman generals um, held on for a bit of time in the west, so Nepos actually um, controlled most of um, the Balkans for some time but eventually died, um, and some other Romans controlled the kingdom of Orléans. And this is also around the time of King Arthur. Uh, in fact, Britannia was um, sort of let go of uh, in the reign of Honorius. Odoacre was also a member of the Eastern uh, Royal Family, as you can see here. So yeah, I hope I can cover them uh, sometime soon. Uh, but thank you very much for watching. Uh, it's been a long one. <laughs> um, I, I doubt many people will uh, will hear this bit of the video, um, you know, because I think most of them will have switched off by this point. Um, but thank you very much, and I will see you uh, next time. Goodbye.